What's going on? What's crack a lack my peoples, my peoples? How you doing? Welcome to the show. I'm Jerry Quickly, and this is happening. And you're making your way through the week if you have a, if you're lucky enough to be a, a worker who has a job, and maybe you're even lucky enough to be a worker who has a job, or you have a shortened week and get to spend a little time with your family. Um, you almost did the damn thing because it's Tuesday. Just one more day, and you can slug it out one more day, and then you get to do your turkey lurkey thing or your vegan thing, whatever you're into. So happy you're joining us today. It's an important, critical day. You know why? Because we're here together. We're getting out of the swamp together. We are going to be talking about what's going on with the Trump administration. There's so much happening. Um, Ivanka Trump, it's been announced, has been operating a private email server since December of of 2016 in the transition after her father illegally stole the presidency from that election day to the White House in that transition period, she and Jared Kushner built a private email server that they've been using from the White House since then. That's right. Private email server. Remember everything that Trump would lock her up, lock her up, lock her up. But I guess when you're his daughter, who he, let, let's be clear. He, Trump wants to, Trump has completely inappropriate relationship with all of his family members. And if you ever looked at the photos of Trump, I'll say it. He clearly and obviously had some weird sexual thing in terms of his own personal desire directed at his own goddamn daughter. So what do you think is going to happen to daughter wife number, number one when she's violated the records clause, the Presidential Records Act, where all this stuff must be done from government email accounts. What they're claiming, Trump is claiming, oh, well, no, you know, we didn't we didn't pass along any sensitive information. Oh, no, no, we didn't pass on any sensitive information. No, no, there was no classified information. No, no, there was no government policy being discussed. It was mostly just about scheduling. It was mostly just about, you know, like yoga and the kids, right? But meanwhile... There were emails that uh, exist that were sent between Ivanka Trump's, not Hillary Clinton, between Ivanka Trump's private email server and cabinet members of the Trump administration. This is just truly, truly shocking. Let's give a listen uh, to this first clip. I want to know what y'all all think about it because my head's about to explode on this. Um, like, I got a real simple answer. If you you spent three years talking about lock her up, lock her up, Hillary Clinton, you then tried to direct the Justice Department to go after her, and your attorney, Don McGahn, Trump, told you, no, no, you can't do that. It will result in you being impeached. You can't weaponize the Justice Department against your enemies. Least of all vanquished enemies, you moron. Okay, all that aside, Ivanka Trump is claiming she had no knowledge that uh, setting up a private email server and using that for government business was a problem. She's literally claiming she had no knowledge this was a problem. Oh, and even worse is U.S. media constantly referring, using the Trump White House language around Ivanka Trump's private email server. The... All of mainstream media is referring to Ivanka's private email server as a private email account. No. A private email account is if you have an account wherever. Yahoo, Gmail, Proton, Hushmail, uh, uh, AOL for you old bastards. (laughs) Wherever you have an email account that's set up privately, that's a private email account. When you create a domain for yourself and build a private email server on that domain to handle your mail, that's not a private email account. That's a private email server, which is the exact problematic language that was used to describe Hillary Clinton's private email server. And now mainstream media is colluding around a goddamn lie that Ivanka Trump didn't have a private email server. She just had a private email account. My head's got to explode. God damn it. We're taking your calls here at 818-985-5735. That's 818-985-KPFK. Let's give a listen to this clip from MSNBC Morning Joe. This is Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski talking about Ivanka and her private email server. House Democrats say they are likely to investigate White House advisor and first daughter Ivanka Trump for using private email to conduct government business. This after her lawyer says an internal review found scores of emails 
about policy and official business with hundreds more related to scheduling meetings Wait, this, and hold travel. On, hold on, hold on a second, hold on a second. This yeah. is the same Ivanka Trump who's related to Donald Trump. She works for him. Who... Said lock her up. Had, yeah, had everybody at conventions and everybody at campaign events chanting lock her up, and they're still chanting they lock still do it. it's fun her for up them. based on Hillary Clinton actually using private so, email? This is, is, that, is that the That's same, it. same it's family? A, it's the same family. It's an impossible Are violation. Are sure it's the same family? Of records law. It is, and I will just point out that I can't imagine anyone on this show or mm. anywhere that we might talk to screaming lock her up i would well, no, of course would, no, no that would be so untoward that would be donald trump and his constitutionally and challenged audiences and dangerous. who obviously have never read the constitution but the i will Microsoft say sword. at least they didn't set up a private domain account a personal oh. domain account before they went to washington like hillary did the microsoft stored personal domain was set up in december 2016 oh, for ivanka trump and her husband okay I take Jared, that part back okay so they did who, that too who is also an assistant to the president okay <clears throat> whose use of personal email for government business was first uncovered by politico last year after liberal watchdog American Oversight posted images of Trump's emails obtained through the Freedom of Information Act. Okay, um, we're not done. We're just getting started. Uh, that, by the way, in case you didn't know, uh, Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski are Republicans. This is a, a discussion among a husband-wife Republican team talking about the inappropriateness of Ivanka's private email server. It is not a private email account. That only describes one aspect of what she built. It is a private email account running on her goddamn private server. Taking your calls here at 818-985-5735. That's 818-985-KPFK. Um, let's give a listen to this next clip. And this is... Uh, uh, again, from MSNBC's Morning Joe, where Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski uh, talk about how uh, essentially Ivanka's attorney offers an unbelievably weak defense. We're just supposed to believe them when they say we kept all the records, we didn't delete anything. We're supposed to believe them when they say nothing sensitive was passed over this. We're supposed to believe them when they say there was uh, nothing that had a secret or classified information that was passed over. Why would we believe anything coming out of the trumpet? It's obscene that they're actually putting this out and, and expect us to believe it. Like, oh, yeah, you know this big giant bottle with the skull and bones on it that says don't eat or drink, po it's poison? Yeah, that's a smoothie, Jerry. Why don't you drink this, you dumb black bastard? Taking your calls here at 818-985-5735. That's 81. What do you mean these black people can read? God damn it. The reconstruction worked. 818-985-5735. That's 818-985-KPFK. Let's give a listen to this next clip. This is uh, Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski talking on Morning Joe earlier today about the terribly weak defense provided by Ivanka Trump's attorney for her completely illegal private email server on which she conducted government business. Spokesman for her lawyer said a review with the White House counsel began in September of 2017, quote, while transitioning into government until the White House provided her the same guidance they had to others who started before she did, Ms. Trump sometimes used her private account almost always for logistics and schedule. You mean like yoga and wedding planning? That's what, That's what Hillary like. said, because yeah. I, I didn't think that worked. Right. Anyhow, go on to address misinformation being peddled about Ms. Trump's personal email. She did not create a private server in her house or office. Oh, there was never classified information transmitted. How do we know? The account was never transferred or housed at Trump organization. No emails so, were ever deleted. How do we know? And the emails have been retained in the official account in conformity with records, preservation laws, and rules. Well, because they say so? No, how do we know? We, we know none That's of this. That's what Hillary's you know lawyer what? said, and she every, was just every, panned every in the press. Every single thing that they just said about no confidential emails, uh, all emails, relevant emails were turned over. That's everything Hillary said at that horrific United Nations press conference. So 
they could be telling the truth. But how do we know? How, why would they tell the truth? It's insane to even assert they could be telling the truth. Why? They just acknowledged they've committed a felony for months that they engaged in on their way into the White House. And now they're saying, yeah, but don't worry, the felony was small and limited. Why would you believe them? Why would you believe the Trump administration when they say this felony is different from the others? This one's small. Now move on. And Drink these skull and bones, you black bastard. 818-985-5735 is the phone number. That's 818-985-KPFK. Uh, let me see. First up, let's talk to Natter calling from Redondo Beach. Natter, welcome to the show. What's the deal? Hey, Jerry. What's going on, man? I love the show. I appreciate everything that you're doing, man. Thank you, bro. I wanted to say thank you. But uh, my, my question I wanted to get your thoughts on is where do you see – things going after Trump leaves office, like where all the erosion of norms and the breakdown of it's going to a dark place is where it's, where it's going is worse than we are now. Yeah, because they, really I think, I think Natter, I share your concern uh, with, you know, where we go after Trump in the first place, Trump is um, a lightning rod and a scab, right? And so he takes all the heat for all of the white supremacist, completely illegal decisions that have been engaged in by the Republican Party. Um, he's also a scab because when that lightning rod is gone and the scab is pulled away, uh, Trump will not exclusively hold the ire and animosity of the U.S. voting electorate. Essentially, when we're done vanquishing Trump, all the Republicans know there'll be a, a brief momentary pause as we turn our head to look at them and say, now we're on to you. And yeah. they know that they have a reckoning that's coming. And as long as Trump is in power, they are able to delay that reckoning. Once Trump is out of power, the reckoning is going to be so severe because their crimes against humanity and their crimes of looting the country have been so severe that the reckoning must be severe. The legal reckoning must be severe. And as a result of the severity of the reckoning, a.k.a. a bunch of old rich white guys getting their asses thrown in prison, they are going to do everything they can to mobilize the violent white supremacists that support them and essentially hold the nation hostage and demand that fewer or no white supremacists be sent to jail because it's not worth it because of the violence it will cause and we need to back off and move on. And I believe that there will be an attempt by uh, the remnants of this administration, the remnants of the Republican Party, to essentially hold America hostage to a long, unending season of racial killings if we attempt to enforce the law against these white supremacists. And while I in no way look forward to that, and more than anything else, I hope that I'm wrong, I say bring it on. And what I mean by bring it on is we have to vanquish these people. And if you are deluded enough to believe that these white supremacists who have now had their sense of power reinflated, which also uh, serves the, the dual role of reinflating their racist sense of duty and responsibility. Once that has been reinflated as it has been, the chance of those crazed white supremacists wrapping themselves in the American flag, simply backing down and really, oh, this power grab didn't work out. And I guess we're just going to have to move on and, and try to get our old jobs back that we've been fired from for our yep. attacks against blacks. So all, what I'm really getting at in this long-winded way is saying that there's so much at stake. There's so much on the table. This is not going to be a simp a, simply a matter of sending Trump to prison or getting Trump out of power. He has awakened a sleeping, angry beast that has limitless grief, limitless anger, limitless grievances, and limitless hatred for everyone who's not white. And we are going to have to defeat this goddamn Kraken once and for all. Yeah, I mean, I, that's my biggest fear is to see how the erosion of norms and to see a lot of these folks that you would have never uh, really... I guess you would have, but you never really would have thought first off the top of your head like the evangelicals and that they would stand by someone that's doing such great harm to the country. But here, uh, but here's I, the I truth about evangelicals going, going who support them. Trump. Here's the real truth about evangelicals who support Trump. Jesus is important to them, but it's much more important that that niggers suffer. 
Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Like that is. Yeah. I'm sorry, bro. I didn't mean to offend you with the language, no, but I'm 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 speaking the language that I believe evangelicals are invested in. Sure, it'd be nice if Trump wasn't uh wasn't a cheat and wasn't running around having sex and ejaculating inside of porn stars while his wife is at home breastfeeding his three month old. They'd prefer if that didn't happen, and they'd prefer if Trump was more a man of Jesus. But what Trump is really doing, he's making them Mexican. Mexicans and them blacks suffer the way they need to. And evangelicals, white evangelicals in this country are so obsessed with racism, they place racism over Jesus. Yeah, I, I just don't see how, uh, you know, so many people who uh, are standing by this man going through so much harm can go back to uh, politics of norm uh, after he's gone. So I just don't know where the country political aspirations are going to be as far as all of these folks that are standing by him now when things uh, try to go back to normal, if they will try to go back to normal. Yeah, you're right about that, man. I'm with you. I'm with you, Nader. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen? I think that's one of the most interesting parts about this time that we're living through and experiencing. It's like that old, uh, you know, that old Chinese, uh, <laughs> that dangerous uh, Chinese uh, parting proverb. Uh, may you live in interesting times. Well, brother, we are living in interesting times. Taking your calls here at 818-985-5735. Again, the phone number here is 818-985-KPFK. I'm Jerry Quicklat, and this is happening. Uh, let me see. Next up, let's give a listen to this clip. This is from MSNBC. This is Ari Melber having a discussion with David Korn. And um, David Korn, uh, you can't, <laughs> I don't think it's possibly more mainstream than David Korn. <laughs> and, his, uh, and his assessment essentially is that Ivanka's claims of ignorance about not knowing that it wasn't okay to have an email, a private email server, and use it for White House government presidential business, that that claim itself is offensive and ridiculous. We're taking your calls, 818-985-5735, 818-985-KPFK. Let's give a listen to this clip. This is David Korn on MSNBC earlier today talking about Ivanka's claim of ignorance as being offensive. Well, you know, what I'm trying to wrap my head around here, and first off, congratulations to Carol and the Washington Post. As a reporter, I'm very envious that they got this scoop. But what I'm trying to think of, what was she thinking? In the story, it says she wasn't aware that there were rules like these she had to abide by. Was she not present for the last two years prior to this as they chanted, lock her up, lock her up at her father's convention and at her father's rallies? And is it it is a complete ignorance or is it a, a hubris that she is above the rules? What people used to say about Hillary Clinton, that you just can't trust her. She doesn't her. whether that was true or not. That was the Republican charge against her with her email server controversy being the number one item on the uh, on the indictment. And here we have Ivanka Trump doing this with a domain she shared with Jared Kushner. So although it's her emails, not his, this again seems to be a family affair and it boils boils down to too unaware, too stupid, or I just don't care. Maybe she should be wearing the coat that Melania walked around in. Daddy, daddy, this is too much. I don't like this email talk. They're negative tweeting. Daddy, daddy. I want to be a Supreme Court justice. If Matthew Whitaker can be illegally appointed as acting attorney general, why can't I be a Supreme Court justice? I'll make all these people with these nasty, nasty words about my private email server. I'll make them suffer in pain. Daddy, I want to be a SCOTUS. I promise not tell anybody about what you did that summer. I was 12. Taking your calls here at 818-985-5735, 818-985-KPFK. I'm Jerry Quickly. This is happening. Uh, let me see. Next up, let's talk to uh, Krista calling from Westminster. Krista, welcome to the show. What's the deal? Hi, Jerry. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Hi. I just had uh, wanted to comment about your uh, comment about evangelicals. I'm not an evangelical, and I'm uh, a Latina. And uh, I just thought it was interesting that, you know, you're calling this entire group of people, evangelicals, 
uh, racist against black people. Or no, not all, not all evangelicals. Evangelicals who support Donald Trump are racists. Well, uh, I'm a Latina that supports Donald Trump. Uh, then you're I'm a bigot. Not by any means. You're a bigot. No, no, you're a bigot because Donald Trump is is investing in greatly in the impression of people of color, including uh, people from the Latinx community, black community, all non-white communities. If you're a non-white person, you voted for Trump. The way the st- structures and dynamics of racism work, you can't be racist, but you can be a bigot, and you, ma'am, are a bigot. Well, I, I, I'm trying to understand how you can judge me as an individual. Based because, on, I'll tell you exactly how. Because I, I support some policies. Sure, I'll tell you exactly how. Because Donald Trump announced, well, in, in at the start of his campaign, he announced that he was an open racist. He had engaged in open racism in the years. In, okay, ma'am. Okay, I'm going right. to hang up on you. He's. I'll tell you exactly how. Now I've hung up on you, you bigot. Donald Trump engaged in open racism for decades. The first time he was in the newspaper was for housing discrimination that he was practicing against people of color. He is engaged. I can't, I'm not even going to waste my breath uh, identifying all the different individual individual acts of open racism and bigotry that Donald Trump has engaged in throughout the years before ever being a political candidate, including birtherism. Then he starts his political campaign with uh, with a fanfare, with a clarion call of racism. He in- doubled down on that racism throughout all of his campaigns. He doubled down on that racism as a president, talking about in Charlottesville, there are very fine people on both sides. He continued to double down on, on on the racism, uh, on the his racist comments against the New York Five, these innocent black and brown youth that had been arrested for a sexual assault they didn't commit. He called for their death on numerous occasions, put full page ads in newspapers, and even just in 2016, when they were finally released from prison and got a small settlement from the city of New York for their illegal incarceration and malicious prosecution, Trump said they should be reincarcerated or killed. He is an open bigot. This is beyond dispute, and it is obvious on the face of it. If you're claiming that he's not a bigot, it's simply you turn to you choose to look away from it. But he's servicing what you want done. You can't possibly vote for Donald Trump. Either you're very wealthy and you're happy he's looting the country for you, and you don't care about his racism. You don't care that of all the misery he's creating on the southern border and stealing children and babies and some of these many, there are dozens and dozens of these children that have yet to be reunited with their family. So either you don't care because you support his economic policies and his policies are one of racial terror. We're not talking uh, about, oh, well, this is a small minor thing. Donald Trump is actively invested in creating racial terror. You cannot vote for a candidate who is a known, open, bigot, racist, misogynist, homophobe, and xenophobe. You cannot vote for a person like that, regardless of your ethnicity, whether you're Latinx, black, Asian, white, it is irrelevant. You may not vote for an open racist who promises to do harm and oppress people of color who then who then gets into office, doubles down, and succeeds in amplifying great harm against people of color, and you somehow, in your head, believe you can vote for an open racist actively creating harm against people of color and you not be a racist. You're a goddamn bigot. Lose my number. 818-985-5735. 818-985-5735. KPFK. He called himself a white nationalist. Are you kidding me? Trump called himself a white nationalist and called Mexican Mexicans rapists. And I'll go far further and say that you are filled with self hatred. It is not possible for a for a person from a, from a Latin background, from whatever you want to call it, Latinx, Latinx, Latina. Latino from a Hispanic background, it is not possible to be a person of color in this country and support Donald Trump without having unaddressed issues of deep self-hatred. You think you're special and you'll just get the good things. When he's done dealing with the other Latins and the other blacks, he's coming for you. 818-985-5735. That's 818-985-KPFK. I'm Jerry Quickly. This is happening.